Well, I'll just jump right in here. As some of you know and some of you don't know, um, my uh, son Jeff died about four and a half years ago. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey around that. Um, <coughs> um, when something like that happens, <coughs> Um, it's hard to breathe, it's hard to stand up and walk, um, and you really wonder how you're going to get from one day to the next. Um, and as I was going through, through the, you know, especially the initial grief, um, I was incapable of praying for myself. And, um, just did not have it within me. But then um, in the mail came all these beautiful cards from some folks here and from lots of folks. People came to visit and um, every day it seemed like there was some phrase or some thought, something I read, something I said that helped keep me going. Um, and I felt this sense of being uplifted somehow and I really felt as I reflected on it you know over time that that was all the prayers that were surrounding me um, I like to uh, write down quotes and clip things out that strike me at the time and I grabbed a couple of things today um, this is from Terry Madeline's column in the Skagit Valley Herald. Uh, it says here, March of 2009. Um, one, of, one of the lines here is, God never promised, a li promised us a life without trials. And um, the reality is there's no way to avoid suffering. And it goes on to say, the crucial test is whether believers can face trials and tribulations without sliding into despair. <clears throat> and for myself, that was something I struggled with. It was very, I have to use the word tempting at times, to just give up and, and um, bow out of life and, and um, not participate anymore. Or, or another direction that that was tempting is to just slide into bitterness and despair, um, keep moving through life, but just be s drowning in cynicism and despair and, and anger. Um, and that, that's an ongoing process, but I still, in my reading and talking and um, there's, there's always a message there um, that seems to be sent my way, that something that I need, need it for that day, um, something that just upholds me and um, keeps me moving forward rather than backwards. And, um, and that's very important to me um, to keep moving forward in my life. Um, it's important to me personally and, and um, I know it's something that my son would want me to do. So, um, anyway, there's hope. There's always hope. So, just wanted to share that with you folks. Thanks. Thank you. When we hear someone speak, you know, we, we, we clap, right? And sometimes uh, we, we don't. Um, and sometimes when you don't, that still means you're appreciating because you're, you want to honor what that person says deeply. Um, and so that's what you all did there. So thank you for that. Um, and thank you, Julia, for sharing with us. What you experience, what she experienced is something that, that happens to all of us, right? Somebody dies, somebody moves, we have some disease comes along. Um, we had no idea... <clears throat> five or six months ago when we were working on the topic for this uh, last summer 
that, uh, that Haiti would have an earthquake uh, the last you know, 10 or 12 days. And that so many thousands of people would, be, would have died. I didn't know last summer when we were working on this idea that uh, my sister would have called me at 5.05 .05 this evening and told me that the lumpectomy that she had did not get all the cancer and so she's going to have a, a mastectomy. That, that phone call came in an hour and a half ago. Right? So that happens to all of us. As we think about the, the, the human life um, and, and the people you know, driving on, on College Way out here and the folk over in the mall and the people in this room, all of us are deeply connected to one another around our vulnerability and around the, the possibility and probability and in fact the, the inevitability that something bad's gonna happen. And all human beings, Christian or not, um, have to deal with that question. And yet sometimes we approach, uh, we at least hear in the media, and, and perhaps some from, from, from some Christian friends we, we know, that God is basically a big lucky rabbit's foot. That if you're a good boy and girl, and if you, um, you know, go to church and pray right and believe the correct things, that those bad things are never going to happen to you. That's what we're told. And what that inevitably does, of course, is that when the bad thing happens, we feel judged and we feel like God is punishing us for something. And so in the very moment when we need God the most, God is the furthest away. Uh, tonight, as is, is I kind of have some conversation with you, um, we're going to be talking about um, things from an Episcopalian sort of point of view. Um, a larger word for the larger Episcopal church around the world is the Anglican church. And so um, Episcopalians really respect reason, scripture, and tradition. And reason is a bigger word than reason. It includes experience and conversation and thoughts and feelings. It includes much more than just reason. It includes scripture, the, the, the readings of, uh, of, the, of the Hebrew scripture and the New Testament. Um, not as, uh, as some kind of a book that tells us exactly what to think, but as the reflection of people who lived a long time ago and who are trying to tell a story. And that that story has been deemed so valuable that we've kept it around. We also respect tradition. And tradition, again, does not tell us what to think. It is really the proposal of people who've lived before us for how to answer some of these big questions, how to respond to them. How do we keep moving forward? in a life that sometimes is very difficult. And so tradition is really a way of relating to people who've gone before us and their proposal to the future about what life's like and how we can understand it. <clears throat> so you're going to hear all three of these. And so we're going to have some really great conversation about the Bible, what the Bible says. First of all, we hear the, the, the Bible says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Right? Have you ever heard that one? <laughs> yeah, that's the good one. And as a clergy person, you know, the reason I became a clergy person is so I could tell people to go to hell and make it stick. So you better watch out. Okay? You didn't know that? Oh, okay. Um, so we interpret this to mean that God likes vengeance a lot. God just digs it. Um, but uh, the larger text here really is that this is a quote from Romans. Uh, that's quoting Leviticus. And here's the larger quote. The thing you've got to know about, about quotes in the New Testament, it's always quoting the whole passage, not just the one little section it's quoting. You shall not take revenge or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So most likely, this was a, um, intended to help human beings resist the urge to take revenge. Just don't do it. And they were using you know, the best argument they could come up with at the time to help resist vengeance. 